Just want to take a second to uh, recognize Caitlin Clark, who plays for the University of Iowa. She plays basketball, and she just scored a career high um, number of points for both men and women in the NCAA with 3,685. Uh, she's a trailblazer who really pursues her passions fearlessly, and I believe that she is an inspiration for all women, um, not just athletes. So go Caitlin Clark. Hello, today I wanted to highlight women in mathematics. So I picked Ruth Haas. Ruth Haas is the driving force behind a strong and vibrant mathematics community at Smith College. This is where she created many programs as well as conferences to help women become more interested and want to be impactful in mathematics. She developed programs for high schoolers and college students alike where they could come together and talk about the world of mathematics. Um, math and women is something they find very important and I'm very impacted by. So Ruth Haas was one of the people that helped develop these programs that create strong, empowering women in mathematics. So thanks, Ruth Haas. Hi, everyone. I am Mrs. Martin, and um, I just wanted to talk about um, a woman in history that I find super inspiring, and she's actually someone that a lot of people know, um, but she is Princess Diana. And um, I just love her story, but what I really like is that she um, she tried to touch people's hearts, and um, she did things with a lot of compassion. She did things to help those in need. Um, she had a huge push um, for um, to clear minefields and um, over in Africa, and she was one of the first people she would walk the minefields. Um, so she did a lot of things that people didn't expect of her, but that really changed um, the way the world viewed people. Um, and one of my favorite quotes of hers is, uh, let me find it here, carry out an act of kindness with no expectation of reward, safe in the knowledge that one day someone might do the same for you. So I just think that that's... Um, just a really awesome quote to remember. It's something that I try to do. Um, try to be kind to people um, without expecting anything back in return, um, because there will be a day that we will all need someone to be kind to us and we won't have anything to give back to them in return. So that is the person that I wanted to highlight. Hello, I'm Karen Herrick. I have this book, The Rebel Girls Handbook, and I wanted to flip through to find someone new for Women's History Month to learn about a new woman in history. I came across Mary Edwards Walker. Um, she was a surgeon, and they gave her the superpowers of boldness and confidence. Um, in it, it says that Mary Edwards Walker was the first female to graduate from medical school here in the United States. She worked during the Civil War to treat Union soldiers and civilians. Uh, but she was not allowed to be paid because she was female. So she stayed on as a volunteer surgeon, risking her life. In fact, she was even um, caught as a spy and spent many years in a prisoner's camp um, for, for her work. She was rewarded the Medal of Honor, very much so from the president. She earned it and wore it on her jacket every day. Um, my favorite story about her is women did not have the right to vote during her time, yet she ran for office. Um, several times, never won, but she used her platform to really fight for the right uh, for women to vote and equality overall in society and to really change the perception and the role of women. Um, so you get a chance, please look up Mary Edwards Walker for Women's History Month. Hi, I'm Cassandra Zugel, and I decided to talk about Sandra Day O'Connor, um, the first woman on Supreme Court. So, Justice Sandra Day O'Connor was appointed to the Supreme Court by President Ronald Reagan and served from 1981 until 2006, which is actually the year I was born. Um, beginning with her childhood growing up on her family's ranch, the ex exhibition recalled her life before joining the Supreme Court. Her service and accomplish accomplishments on the court and her continuous her continuing 
continuing legacy off the court. Following her retirement from court on January 31st, 2006, um, which was actually a little bit before I was born, um, Justice O'Connor remained active as a tireless advocate for judicial independence and rule of law throughout the world. In recognition of her lifetime accomplishment, President Barack Obama awarded Justice O'Connor with the nation's highest civil honor, the Presidential Medal of Freedom on August 12, 2009. For Women's History Month, I will be talking about Eleanor Roosevelt. Throughout her travels, public engagement, she largely refined the role of First Lady. Roosevelt then served as a United States delegate to the United Nations General Assembly from 1945 to 1952 and took a reading, re, leading role in designing the text of the Universal Declaration of Human Rights. Hi, my name is Miley. I'm in OVA in 10th grade. For, um... This Women's History Month, I want to honor Harriet Tubman. She was an incredible woman who played a big role in American history. She was born into slavery in the early 1820s, then escaped to freedom in 1849. She became a prominent abolitionist and humanitarian, helping guide many enslaved people to freedom through the Underground Railroads. Um, she risked her life many times to lead others to safety. Her bravery and determination continues to inspire people today as she fought for justice and equality. She's a powerful reminder of the strength of the human spirit and the importance of fighting for what is right. Hello, my name is Cora Steiger and I will be talking about Sally Ride. She was the first American woman in history to go into space. And when she was a little girl, she liked playing tennis. But when she went into college, she got her degree in science and physics. When she graduated college, she answered the newspaper by NASA because they were looking for young scientists to go take flight with them into space. She was only one out of five women who got chosen out of 78 people in the training. She trained how to parachute jump and how to survive with water resources. And then, She aborted the space shuttle in 1983, where she became the first American woman in space and the youngest American in space at that time. I chose Harriet Tubman for my woman, and I like she she led the she was a slave in her early life, but then she got free and she was through the Underground Railroad. And she helped 70 slaves get through to the Underground Railroad and be free. And she was a great, big supporter of the suffrage movement. And she, at the moment, she probably didn't, she, she didn't think she would make this much history. But she made, a, she made so much history more than she probably could have even imagined. Hi, I am Lucille Christie. And for Women's History Month, I will be interviewing Ms. Krelak. Hello. Hi. Um, please state your name and birth date. Okay. So my name is Mrs. Kim Krelak, and I was born in November of 1960 in Saginaw, Michigan. Okay. Tell us a little bit about your early life. Okay. So um, my early life, I was born in Saginaw, Michigan in 1960. And uh, my parents taught me um, to work hard, to love Jesus, to have integrity, and and to be good to my fellow men and women. And um, also, um, I was born into a big family. I had 
uh, two sisters and four brothers, and um, it was very nice. Uh, I went to school in both Saginaw and in um, in Bridgeport, and I graduated from Bridgeport High School, magna cum laude, and um, I also went to SVSU, which is Saginaw Valley State University, and I studied education. I stud had an education major, um, math and Spanish, and um, so uh, my first degree was in secondary education, so I taught high school Spanish and math, um, and then I went back and got my elementary um, certification and a master in elementary education and also a, a early childhood endorsement. And in my early life, I also wanted to tell that um, that I, um, I had, um, uh, my parents took us to church and they taught us to earn our way to church camp um, by, you know, selling um, vegetables and things like that. And um, they taught us to earn spending money and to always save our money as well. And at age 11, I started playing piano in our church, and I did this all through junior high, high school, and even after uh, I was married uh, for many years. Uh, my sisters and siblings and I made fairs for ourselves and our, chil our fam family members and also our neighbors and, um, and siblings, and they also, the neighbors also had a large family, and um, we would charge them like 10 cents to get in, and then we would charge them... Um, and we would have little um, entertainment for them, and it was a lot of fun. Our vacations were to Chicago and to see our grandparents and our relatives, and then uh, to northern Michigan also to visit, go swimming and camping. Very nice. Can you tell us a little bit about your first job? Sure. For my very first job, I was a secretary for my father for um, his appliance business, and um, he had uh, buyer's appliance sales and service, and so I would um, call the newspaper and place ads for the business um, for whatever s weekly sales we had. I would also um, polish appliances. I would also answer phone calls. I would show the appliances to uh, customers. Um, I did a lot of that starting probably at your age and all in through my teen years. And um, had a very, very good time in that job. And my parents taught me um, how important it was, you know, to be a good, um, hard worker with integrity and, and just do my very best in everything that I do. Can you tell me a little bit about your current job or if you're retired or a job you had? Sure. Yeah, I sure can. So, um, that was my first job. And then my first job, you know, I, like I say, I, ta I was, I was taught about the value of money and about the value of working hard and being honest and trustworthy. Um, and I actually opened my own bank account also um, at the age of 12 and would ride my bike to go make um, deposits into my bank account. But my, my uh, job that I had after that, um, after graduating from college, um, I worked um, in, uh, in education. So I taught high school Spanish and math. I taught junior high Spanish and math. I also taught um, several years in our Christian school um, for our church, and I also, um, in there, I, I taught second grade, fifth grade, middle school, math and Spanish, um, and then I also um, taught uh, and retired from the Oxford Community Schools. I taught uh, there fifth grade, I taught elementary Spanish, and I taught kindergarten, and I also did interventionist uh, work at the end of my career, so that... Uh, I really had a very, very wide variety of children that I worked with, and I love all ages. Um, since I have retired, I mean, you may not have asked that yet, but... Yeah. And I really, I really enjoyed it, um, working in the Oxford schools and working in all of the schools has been a real blessing to me. That's great. Do you have any more other important details you'd like to share? Okay, uh, well, since I... Um, have uh, retired. I volunteered in my church, um, teaching Sunday school, helping in nursery, teaching an adult finance class, having services in nursing homes, playing piano, singing in nursing homes. I um, also volunteered at Clear Lake Elementary in reading support and math. Um, impo important details that I would tell um, people is that I really enjoy spending time with my husband of 44 years 
and my children and my wonderful uh, grandchildren. I have six. Mm -hmm. And um, I also enjoy tutoring Lu Lucy weekly. And um, uh, I would like to say that um, I tell young people today to live for Jesus. That's the most important thing of all. Follow your dreams and work hard to make those dreams come to pass. Um, keep up with your studies and be a blessing to your community. And reach out to others. And do everything you can just to be a real blessing at, and in your community. Thank you. Mm -hmm. I hope you all enjoyed. Thank you for watching. Hello. To celebrate Women's History Month, I'd like to share a little bit about a special woman that I want to recognize in our history and especially here in Michigan. Cora Reynolds Anderson was a member of the Ojibwa tribe, and I want to share a little bit about her as an educator and as a Native American and her contributions. Not only was it she a teacher, she served as the first woman elected to the Michigan House of Representatives. She served in the state legislature, and today the legislature building, it's an office building in Lansing, bears her name. In recognizing her contributions in 2001, the Michigan Women's Hall of Fame wrote, at a time when minorities, including Native Americans, were subjected to considerable economic and social discrimination, Anderson's determination to attend college, return the benefits of her education to her community was notable. Her role as an educator, legislator, and public health reform leader aided the Native American community as well as the whole of society. She died in 1950 and her burial is unknown, but many people remember her through that special recognition with the House um, Legislative Office Building being named after her. She's especially interesting to me because she started out as a teacher and then taught in so many other ways beyond the classroom. So here's recognizing Cora Reynolds Anderson. Hello, my name's Scott Burgess, and for Women's History Month, I chose to study Amelia Earhart because I think her story is very interesting. Amelia Earhart was very interested in ventures, adventure since she was a small child. In 1920, Earhart rode in an airplane for the first time at an air show. In 1923, after some training, Earhart was able to earn her pilot's license, the 16th woman in the world to do so. In 1932, Earhart was the first woman to, and second person, to fly solo across the Atlantic Ocean. In 1935, she was the first person to fly from Hawaii to the U.S. mainland. However, two years later, in 1937, tragedy struck when Amelia Earhart's plane disappeared during a circumnavigation attempt by airplane. For Women's History Month, I chose Princess Diana, but she was a really good person, and she was a princess. She was born in 1961 and died in 1997 of a car crash. In 1997, she also won a Nobel Peach Prize for stopping landmines, or trying to help stop landmines. She was really big on charities and helping people with, that are homeless and with HIV. She had two sons, Prince William and Prince Harry. She died in a car crash in 1997. She was married to Prince Charles and the, was divorced in 1996. She was also involved in many royal family duties. Hi, I'm Mrs. Darnell, and I want to share with you my pick for Women's History Month. So over a decade ago, I picked up this book called American Heroines, and in it, it outlines um, many women who have left an impact um, that we have benefited from. But my pick out of this book is Emma Willard, and here's a photo of Miss Willard. She is the undisputed leader in the struggle um, to, for the universal right to education, and so it's no surprise that she would be my pick, right? Um, so growing up in her house, Emma grew up on a farm, and um, but reading was really important. It was something they did very often. Her father, who was a farmer, was educated through books, not necessarily through schooling. Um, and Emma took this risk and attended a new school who had opened up in her area and really studied and graduated earlier than what was typically done at that point in time. 
Um, and then she became a teacher. After she married, she left the teaching profession and she started forming this idea that like a campaign that there should be a formal education training for all women. She argued that educated women benefit society. And then she began a school for teaching. Um, so she is definitely my pick. She devoted her life to the education of young women in early America. And I just don't believe that we would be where we are in terms of education without her. Hi, I'm Nada, and today I'm going to talk about the woman who created the first university in the world. Her name was Fatima Al-Fahri. She and her family migrated to Fez, Morocco. A lot of people also migrated there. At that time, they outgrew the mosque that was already there. Fatima Al-Fahri then decided to build a new mosque with the money that she inherited from her father. The mosque there took 18 years to build, and she supervised the, supervised the construction. The mosque was named the Karoyin Mosque after the people in her hometown. The mosque at first was a center that teached religion, but after a while, it expanded to include other topics such as astronomy, astronomy, medicine, languages, mathematics, and even music. This is the beginning. This was the beginning of the first learning center in the university. Throughout the centuries, scholars, mathematics, poets, astronomers, scientists, and many other educated people even came to the Qarawiyin Mosque. Then it welcomed students and teachers all over the world without any racism. Some people say that even early algebra was developed in the walls of that university. It also has one of the world's oldest library. We have a lot to thank this brilliant woman who illuminated the world with her dedication for, of providing other people. Even Fatima herself studied at the university. <laughs> The university, the Karawin University, is even still standing today, and it, it is the world's oldest university in the world. Hope you learned a lot. Bye. For Women's History Month, I will be talking about Eleanor Roosevelt. Throughout her travels, public engagement, she largely refined the role of first lady. Roosevelt then served as a United States delegate to the United Nations General Assembly from 1945 to 1952 and took a reading, re, leading role in designing the text of the Universal Declaration of Human Rights. Hi, I am Mrs. Brown, and the person that I would like to highlight for Women's History Month is Coach Pat Summit. Coach Summit was the head coach at the University of Tennessee for 38 years. She um, was there from 1974 until 2012. The NCAA did not begin sponsoring women's basketball until 1982, which was actually 43 years after um, the first men's basketball tournament was held. She was an ambassador for women's athletics, and she earned many, many accomplishments during her career. She had 1,098 career wins, which at the time of her retirement was the most at the time. She won a silver medal at the Olympics as a player, and she also won a gold medal, the, actually the United States first gold medal as a coach in 1984. She won eight NCAA tournaments, and she also actually never missed a tournament in her time as head coach at Tennessee. Um, she was named the Naismith Basketball Coach of the Century, um, was named number 11 on the 50 greatest coaches of all time, actually, and actually the only woman on that list. Uh, President Obama awarded her the Presidential Award, um, the Medal of Freedom, and she also earned the Arthur Ashe Courage Award at the ESPY Awards. Um, she retired early in 2012 due to a diagnosis of early onset um, Alzheimer's, so she was sorely missed. Um, and one of her favorite quotes that I enjoy um, seeing every time I come across it is, success is a project that is always under construction. So we have Coach Summit to thank for um, being a trailblazer 
an ambassador for women's athletics to allow our athletes the opportunities that they have this at this time. Hello, my name is Mohamed Dambele and I am a sixth grader from Oxford. Women I'll be talking about women history in my Rosa Parks. Rosa Parks is a woman that helped segregation and she even met two segregation two people that and um, help segregation in Martin Luther King and Malcolm X. Later, she got arrested two times for helping the bus boy cat. She is, she is a remembered and really loyal person in her community and helped the boycott and the segregation end, but and helped the boycott become successful. Hello, I'm Aisha, and for Women's History Month, or Her Story Month, I will be talking about Khadija bin Khalid. This is going to be a very short video. So, um, Khadija bin Khalid was the first wife and the first follower of the Islamic prophet Muhammad. Khadija was the daughter of Khalid ibn Asad, a noble of the Quraysh tribe in Mecca and a successful merchant. Khadija is often referred to by Muslims as the mother of believers. Khadija was born in 526 AD Mecca, Saudi Arabia, and she died in November 22nd, 1980, at age 63 in Mecca, Saudi Arabia. She had many children, actually. Some of them are Falcona bint Muhammad, Zainab bint Muhammad, and so on. She was a very successful businesswoman, and she helped the Prophet Muhammad financially most of the time and lovingly. And yeah, that's about it. So thank you for watching and bye. Women's History Month assignment, Claire Baker, World History. Two women I want to celebrate this Women's History Month are my mom and my best friend's mom, Mrs. Janky. I think it's important to celebrate women who have done things more known, but I think everyone has an impact on the world, so it's important to celebrate them too. Both of them have been very positively influenced on my life, and they are really important to me. My mom has been with me since day one. She's really, She's been really supportive of me and my dreams and goals. She has so many great things about her that I have really helped me through life. I know that I can count on her no matter what. Whenever I'm struggling, she's always there for me. She understands me really well, and I love to hang out with her. We have a lot of the same interest, and we can do things like finishing each other's sentences. My mom is really funny. Whenever I am with her, she always makes me smile. One way that she is super supportive is academically. She used to teach high school level math. So whenever I am struggling, I know I can do go to her, and she can help me break down problems that then explain in a way I can understand. A few other qualities that she has that makes her such a great person is the fact that she is also very patient, kind, and thoughtful. She always at any of my sporting events and she genuinely cares about what is happening in my life. Another woman who's been very impactful in my life is my best friend's mom, Mrs. Janky. Whenever I'm struggling with something and don't really want to talk to my parents about it, I always know that I go to Mrs. Janky. She's basically like my unofficial second mom. She's thoughtful and patient, as well as wise and genuine. Whenever she asks how I'm doing, she always wants an honest and genuine response out of me, not just I'm good. She is a very uplifting person and she always has something nice to say. She tells my friends and I know how pretty we are and things that she loves about us. And she loves to pray with us and talk with us about anything and everything. Mrs. Janky has been able to shine a light in my life, and she's been an amazing person to know and love. Words cannot simply even come close to being able to describe how much I love both my mom and Mrs. Janky. They've been such amazing people in my life, and I truly couldn't even imagine where I would be without them. While women who have major league impacted history are definitely important, these women in my life are just as important.